In this video, we're going to model a simple book and UV unwrap it to the existing texture. To begin the model, we'll start off with a cube. I'm going to use the scale tool to resize this. Okay, that looks like a good shape for this book. So then I'll move it up a bit. This is going to be a closed book, so we have one that's the binding, and then over here is going to be where the pages would be. So first, let's get that rounded binding. Uh, we're going to go ahead and... there's different ways we could do this. I'll shift right click to my multi-cut tool, hold down control to get an edge loop. I can click to cut in three edge loops. So I've cut one in here, here, and here. And that cuts cutting all the way around. So basically that gives me three interfaces. That'll be the pages. And then this area we can round out to be the binding. So to round it out, I might pull this out. And then this edge and this edge. I can scale these to pull them closer to each other. And there we go. I get like a little rounded edge. Now if we right click and check it out in object mode, we might have kind of like a, a hard edge there where we can see that line. So to soften that edge, we'll go to edge mode, select it, and then either shift right click, soften harden edge, soften, or you can go to mesh display, soften edge. Now if we look at an object mode, we won't see that line there anymore. All right, so next we'll go ahead and extrude in these three faces to get the pages. So I'll right click to face mode, select these three faces. And then I can do shift right click extrude and then just push these inwards. And there we go, we can hit Q to exit. Now if you're using a newer version of Maya, you can use shift to extrude, but if you just extrude by grabbing the middle button, then it's going to also scale in the Y, which we may not want. So you can extrude and click on this square, which will only do it in these two axes. So that's also one way to do it. You have to clean this part up a little bit, um, but just FYI, if you're using the newer Maya, I'll go ahead and use the shift right click extrude. Now that does make this part look a little bit crooked, so we can grab it, this face, and with our scale tool, scale it in the X to just align it. And I can move it a little bit. Same thing on this side. Scale it in the X to align it, and then move it. If I want to move this out or in, I can. All right, and there we go. Now we have the pages for the book. If you wanted to add more detail, you could. I'm just keeping this purposefully really simple. Before we UV unwrap, let's go ahead and assign our texture. So select the model, right click, assign new material. Uh, again, we could choose whatever we want. I'm gonna choose a Lambert. Um, now I have a lot of history, which means I have some tabs here. You know, you have the history stack. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete the history. And then that way I just have less tabs to deal with. Okay, so over here on my Lambert, I'll go ahead and call this book mat. Okay, and then in the color channel, we'll plug in a file, and then we'll choose from our source images folder the book image. Okay, we hit six to make it show up. All right. So now I'll select the book and then open up my UV editor. Right now, the UVs are the default ones that a cube comes with. Uh, so what we want to do is go ahead and recreate our UVs. To begin, I'll go ahead and do a create automatic. That does a box map around the whole object. And it's not perfect. We need to go in and edit all this, but at least it gives us something that looks better than what we had before. So there's a button here that will dim your texture. If, it's, uh, if you want to do that, I'll go ahead and undim mine. I think that's easier to see uh, 
just regular. Then I have my shaded UVs turned on with this button. So to begin, I want to take the faces that basically make up this section here, the cover, and I just want to stitch those all together to be one UV shell. So to do this, I'm going to right click, go to edge mode, because that's where the sewing happens. And what I'll do is I'll start right here on this corner and I'll sew these two together. So we can shift right click, move and sew. Now you can see over here what that's doing is it's starting to sew these pieces together and they'll start to move and sew onto each other. So now over here to the next section where I have my next seam, I'll click on that, shift right click, move and sew. You can see that that's causing it to jump over. We can check out the UV shell. So see how now it's, we've sewn that part to this part. Now this part's part of it. So now right here is the next seam. We'll grab, shift right click, move and sew. Okay, the next one, shift right click, move and sew. And there we go. Now I have a shell that's the cover of the book. Okay, so let's look at our checker pattern though. So this particular UV shell, it's kind of uh, squashed. It's not giving us the correct size that we would want. So uh, this happens when we project it. Sometimes it just doesn't project it to the right proportion. Sometimes it tries to make it fit in this zero to one space. So it just kind of will smush it. All right, so to fix this, we can go ahead and unfold this UV shell. So I'll right click, I'm in UV shell mode. Um, and then I can come over here to the unfold section and I click optimize. Oh, now that should scale these like this and help my proportion be more square. Now if it's not doing that, it might be because of our transforms. So let me just minimize this. And if I take a look at my channel box, you can see that your object still has scale values here. It's still remembering back when it used to be a cube. So uh, we don't really need to keep that around. We just have these values here we don't need. So we can go ahead and freeze our transforms, which will clear that up. And now if we optimize, I'll select the UV shell, optimize. There we go. Now that gives us a better result. All right, we can try out this button to straighten the UVs. Nice. We can check out our checker pattern, make sure it's looking even around the cover area. Nice, very good. All right. Now that I have this UV shell, I can go ahead and move it over to the texture and start to get it set up properly. What we'll do is we'll start to adjust this I'm going to go ahead and scale it up so that way it fits. And now in this case, since we have an existing picture, we are going to go ahead and adjust it uh, vertically, which will mess up our checkerboard pattern, but we already have the texture in place so we can see how that's looking. And sometimes it's okay to adjust that. It's just you have to be aware that you're adjusting it. Let's take a look at it. How's that looking? It looks all right. These parts looks okay, but we need to get a little bit closer in here and make sure that these this the edges here are lining up. So we'll right click UV mode. I'll grab these and then pull them. Oh, that's this part of the book. So let me maneuver my viewport. Okay, right about there looks good. Then I'll do the same thing for the top part. Grab these UVs. Maybe right here. How's that? It's up to you which part of the book you want to be the front and the back. Um, right now, this is the top. Um, and I'm assuming this is the back, but if we wanted the other side to be the cover image, we could just rotate our shell over. So if you would like this part to be the cover and that to be the back, you would just have to rotate it around. Next up, we'll do the pages of the book. 
So I have two different textures here. I have one for the side and then one for the middle. So we can start off with the middle. Basically I'll just grab this face here um, and let's see, I think it's its own UV shell. If it wasn't, we would just cut it from uh, whatever it was sewn to. All right, and let's just drag it over here. Now it looks like it's actually, uh, it needs to be rotated. So I'll switch over to my rotate tool. Remember you can hold down J to snap your rotation. Now I'm actually not too sure where, what is the top and what is the bottom. So if we wanted to see that, we could go to UV mode and grab those individual UVs and then you can see where they are corresponding to on your 3D object. So this is actually supposed to be the top corner. So I'll go ahead and rotate this just so that way I'm consistent to where the top is actually the top. There we go. So that's the top, that's the top. Okay. Alright, and then I'll just go ahead and size these to fit There we go. How does that look? It's all right. Not bad. All right, so now we'll do the same thing for the other sides. Um, so let me grab those. I think they're just those two faces there. Okay, I'll just move them over. And we'll go ahead and do one at a time here. Now I only need one side, so one side texture they're just gonna share. So first I'll do this one here. We'll go ahead and rotate it. I'll just scale it so I can see. And so we want it to match up to where the end is over here and the the uh, outer part is over here. All right, so now I'll just shape it. I can right click, go to UV mode and adjust it. And how's that? Alright, not bad. Now basically I could take this face and just match it up. So I'm just gonna put it here. I will rotate it. And then I'll go ahead and match it up. Now one, one, one way we could do this is we could right click, go to our UV mode and just snap these UVs together. So I could grab this UV, um, and then V will toggle on vertex snap. Now it also works with the UV component. Even though these aren't vertices, it still works. So if I hold down V, now I can drag these and then they'll snap to any other UVs. So that can be a quick way to just kind of snap things. All right, let's check it out. Now you know what, I think this actually needs to be flipped. See how it's a little bit darker here? If we were to just scale this out. Yeah, we actually, that's the uh, the end of the book. So we just need to flip this UV. So to do that, you just select it and then you can go to modify flip. Now you'll notice though in your UV editor, it's turned red. And basically faces that are flipped are shown as red and that's not bad it's just letting you know it's flipped it's just really blatantly showing you things that aren't flipped and are flipped by making them red or blue uh, basically when they're flipped that means they're going to be backwards so if we were to take this red shell and put it over the words here it would show up backwards because it's flipped it's not like it's a bad thing it's just something to be aware of so then the last thing we need to do here is these side parts and then the inner parts here. So let's look at the UVs we have left here. Now they're kind of uh, weird proportions so what we can do is go to UV shell mode. We could just grab all of them together and then hit optimize. Okay now that at least stretches them out so we can tell a little bit easier what they are. Uh, let's also try straightening these. Nice. There we go. So these are the ends you can see there are the two ends here. So I don't really have a uh, particular part to be their texture. You know, we could kind of fit them here, um, or we could honestly just sort of put them in any of these spots. It just sort of depends where you want them. 
So we could see what that looks like. Might look kind of interesting. But it's such a skinny little area. Now this, it really depends on your texturing method. Um, I'm just creating a diffuse map. I'm using, I'm not doing PBR shading. So I'm able to do something like this. Or another thing we could do is we could grab this and then just tuck it away over here to this, any other part of the image. And just sort of use that to color it. So I could do the same thing with this guy. Scale it down. And just give it another part of the texture. It depends how important these pieces are. You know, if they deserve more than you know, we can give them more resolution. So we could maybe put them over here too. We could give them part of this. How does that look? Yeah, that might be a little bit better so they don't stand out as much. It really just depends. So basically we could just take the rest of this stuff and again just kind of give it something on the texture sheet. So I'll just kind of lump these together and then I'll scale them and put them somewhere. Maybe I'll put them over here in this red kind of texture. Let's see how that looks. That's kind of interesting. So again, it's just kind of wherever you want them to be. Alright, and there we go. Now we have the book modeled and UV unwrapped.